If we, if this question is posed to us, what according to you is a MOOC or what according to you are the components of the MOOC? What so, will each of us say? So what, what was the need for calling yeah, it a MOOC, MOOC or making it into a MOOC? Online courses existed for a long time, good courses, open courseware of MIT, you know, but why MOOC? Yeah. So one is, I think, the synchronous orchestration, right? right? So the MOOCs have there is a start date and yeah. the online courseware mm. was not having that model it was That's just resources, resources. It so was you're a moving trip. from the model of just having resources to the model of a Unless course Unless you look at universities which ran online courses as part of their formal courses there there was a start date there was an end date there were these parts yeah, 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 yeah. at the moment this concept of having technology to support big data that's when i think really MOOCs really play i mean that's when MOOCs originated for me so you're looking at a historical I I, I think I'm I'm looking at it more from a technology perspective. Huh. But I am saying so what he said was the pedagogy perspective. That instead of just self pace that you it's a resource, you yeah. use it whenever you want to. Instead of that it has been formally given out as a course where there is the structure is defined by the instructor and only in that manner, it should start. I so, think these resources, they were never called a course. No, yeah, they were not yeah. resources. Or course where, yes. No, but there were, course there were course, course like, where? like, in your NPTEL. Or NPTEL courses. Ah, course where. Course where. Yeah. Course where. But that yeah. course, uh, so far, so from course to a uh, MOOC, so one need, what uh, he just said was that uh, it has to be following a synchronous mm -hmm. pattern so mm -hmm. that uh, people can um, interact mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. That is definitely one. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? So the other way, so what has changed in a MOOC is the massive yeah. part so are, and the open part. Correct. Because the yeah. online courses were for okay, specific. So, mm -hmm. so are we saying that M and O are attached to that O and C? Correct. So and C existed. Correct. Yes. Only I'm just saying it is M. So open on the ah. one hand, open, open courseware existed. existed. Yeah. Open yeah. courseware, but without yeah. the structure of a course, course. existed. Yeah. Correct. On the other hand, formal structured courses existed, Correct. but they were not open and they were not online in this. Yes. I'm sorry, they were not open and they were not uh, massive in this sense. Mm -hmm. So the massive has another role to play. So because of the massive, new technologies also came into play. Correct. Huh. Uh, so if it were an online course, I am still looking at analytics which the university normally provides right. to me. When Because of the massiveness, I think a big, big push came towards looking at analytics. I mean, earlier you had a single university system, it's a server client, whatever be the architecture, so there is a central thing. The moment the idea of cloud came in and people, so anyone could, you could have your server hosted mm. virtually everywhere. Mm. I think that is when for me, this idea of MOOC as we know now. So, is, the first question is what is the goal of the MOOCs as, at least the first generation MOOCs as we know it? And secondly, did the technology come first or did the goal come first and then the technology yeah, yeah. was uh, I think, yeah. born or was invented to realize this goal? So, let me take a shot at answering mm -hmm. that. Uh, I think what, what happened or what the natural progression mm. was that everybody agreed that the expert lectures by the leaders in the field needs to be disseminated widely. Okay. So that's where the archival value. archival value and not just archival value, it's a dissemination like the new form of information dissemination. Access, access to the experts. Yeah, not just through textbooks that are written, but mm. also through videos that they give. Right. So initially a whole bunch of these expert lectures became available like which some of which became the OCW courseware material and so on and after that we thought of putting some structure on it and uh, creating courses at which time activities assignments all those things also became part of these uh, OCW materials right mm -hmm. and subsequently is when people thought that why not make this an open course hmm. Hmm. at least if you look at the historical evolution that has been the direct the way these audacity or those things hmm. came it was andrew's uh, that machine learning lecture which he correct. Uh, yeah. openly correct. put out correct and that's when they saw that correct. there is this 
I think they just tested the mm-hmm. proof of that uh, concept mm-hmm. and they succeeded in that. That's when these mm-hmm. platforms, he, I think that's when where Coursera or those kind of platforms, the idea of mm-hmm. those platforms emerged. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's all, all about the technology being available at the right place. The evolution of technology has a larger way. The goal was always there, I think. Mm. From 90s or whenever we are thinking of computer-based or technology-based interventions in uh, classrooms or any other places. So having wikis, having all these things put out, blogs. So this yeah. idea of dissemination was always there. Mm. Correct. And the moment this technology came in, that's when yeah, it got a big push. Okay, why don't we do mm. this? Why don't we move out the university from the walls to... No, and it's become so routine for instructors now that it's yet another format that a regular instructor can Correct. play with. Hmm. Yeah. 